Hi friends, Father Kerry Walters here, pastor of Holy Spirit American National Catholic Church, and this is another Holy Spirit moment. This one on the great chain of being, freedom, and an Italian Renaissance philosopher. The 20th century French existentialist Jean-Paul Sartre is famous for being the philosopher of freedom. Sartre placed such a high value on human freedom that he refused to call it a predicate. He refused to say that humans possess freedom. Instead, he argued, humans are freedom. That is what our essence is. We are born without a nature. We acquire a nature as we go through life by virtue of the choices we make. His famous tag for this is existence precedes essence. Now, it's precisely because of that that Sartre argues that God cannot exist. Because if God exists, Sartre seems to think, and explicitly says so in a little book of his entitled Existentialism as a Humanism. If God exists, then God has created everything that is. And if God has created everything that is, that means that God has fixed a nature for everything that is. And that would include human beings. But if I'm born with a fixed nature, then I can't be free. So, concludes Sartre, God can't exist if we want to value human freedom. Now, it's astounding and very interesting that five centuries before Sartre, um, an Italian uh, Renaissance philosopher by the name of Giovanni Pico della Mirandola argued just the opposite. Pico argued that we are free precisely because God exists. And I'd like to share with you his argument, because it's not only an intriguing one, it seems to me it's a very, very good one. Pico was a member of the Italian Renaissance. He lived in the 15th century. Um, he dies in uh, 1491 at a very young age. Rumor is that he was actually poisoned. Um, the Italian Renaissance, of course, is a rebirth. That's what the word Renaissance means. A rebirth of what? Well, a rebirth of appreciation of classical literature and languages, um, which also brought about a new humanism, a new interest in and high regard for what it means to be a human being. Uh, Pico was a genius from a very young age. He was renowned for his learning. And just like most people in the Renaissance, he was intoxicated with languages. So by the time he was still a teenager, he was fluent in Latin and Greek and Hebrew and Arabic. And as a matter of fact, these latter two languages uh, caused him to be extremely interested in the Kabbalah. And he wrote extensively about the Kabbalah from a Christian perspective. Now, when he was 23, uh, he published 900 theses, going much better than Luther would a generation later with his own theses. The number of theses. Uh, and what Pico wanted to do was to invite all of the learned people of his day to come and debate these 900 theses with him, these 900 propositions. Pico published them because he believed that they were instrumental in creating a new synthesis of knowledge, a new synthesis of learning. What he wanted to do was to show that the two going philosophies of the Italian Renaissance of his day Platonism on the one hand and Aristotelianism on the other weren't at all as incompatible as their respective champions insisted they were. I so wish that that debate had taken place and that we have a transcript of it, but alas, it didn't take place. The Pope at the time, Innocent VIII, got wind of what was going on and he suspected probably correctly, that at least some of the 900 theses were heretical, and he shut the whole thing down. But, but, Pico did write a short book, which came to be known as the uh, Oration on the Dignity of Man. The short book was intended as an introduction to the 900 Theses. Now, you and I no longer remember the 900 Theses, and quite frankly, we don't much care, but we do have this gem of a little book, which was forgotten, all but forgotten, for several centuries um, until rediscovered in the 19th century. It's a gem of a book because it is uh, what's known as the Renaissance Manifesto. It really does offer one of the strongest arguments you will find for 
human freedom. And that it's that human freedom, according to Pico, that uh, creates the dignity with which humans are imbued. So what's his argument? Again, it's quite different from Sartre's. Sartre claims that humans are free because God doesn't exist. And Pico says, no, humans are free because God exists. So here it is. Pico argues that everything that God has created does have a fixed nature, exactly what Sartre feared. And what Pico seems to have in the back of his mind is a medieval notion uh, known as the great chain of being. The great chain of being says that there is a hierarchy in reality, a hierarchy that runs vertically and horizontally, and that on that great chain of being, everything that has been created by God has a fixed point. Everything that, has created, that is created by God has a determinate nature, and its nature determines where on the great chain of being, stretching from God to the simplest created thing, uh, is. So, for instance, God and angels are at the very top, and microbes and dust are at the very bottom, and everything in between is situated along the chain. That's the great chain of being, understanding of reality. It's an important concept for the Renaissance mind, because if you think about it, the great chain of being model guarantees that the universe is orderly, that the universe will not collapse into chaos, because everything is where it ought to be, exactly where it ought to be. And even though you and I may never have heard the expression, the great chain of being, or even though you and I may poo-poo it because for one reason or another, we don't approve of hierarchical models of reality, it certainly is the case that we have at least vague vestiges of it still around, don't we? We do tend to think that, for example, a chimpanzee is of a higher order than a, an amoeba. And we do tend to think, don't we, that um, a beautiful crystal is of higher value than a handful of mud. And we do clearly think that the universe is orderly and not something which is prone to in unpredictability and chaos. Now, back to Pico. Pico argues following Genesis, that the final thing which God created were humans, Adam and Eve. But when God created humans, God discovered there was no room left on the chain. All of the available spots on the chain had been filled by the creatures that God had already brought into existence. Moreover, God had run out of forms. He had no more forms to give created things. And what that means is that human beings, alone of everything else that God created, are without an essential inborn nature. And what that means is that we are, according to Pico, essentially free. We can move anywhere we wish along the great chain of being. We can, alas, descend the great chain of being and take on brutish and animal-like dispositions, temperaments, actions, thoughts, or, or we can rise on the great chain of being, approximating closer and closer and closer to the angels and to God. And it's therein that the dignity of human beings exists. We are free and capable of choosing who we will be. And Pico goes so far as to say that we can become seraphic-like. We can become like the seraphim, like the angels, if we discipline ourselves to do so, if we discipline ourselves to rise on the great chain of being rather than to descend. So Pico is a great Christian champion of human freedom, much like perhaps Pelagius was centuries before, um, and certainly um, his strong espousal of freedom has run into criticism uh, from people who argue that he leaves no room for divine grace, that in point of fact he gives too much autonomy, too much power of self-transformation to human beings. It seems to me that that's an issue about which reasonable people can reasonably disagree. But what is absolutely uh, exciting is Pico's exuberant defense of human freedom, which uh, allows us the dignity of self-creation, at least to a large extent. 
I really do urge you to get yourself a copy of the oration. You can find it easily online and read uh, the first few pages. Basically about the first 20 pages is uh, all you really need to uh, discover this wonderful uh, chain of being uh, uh, um, humanism that I've been describing. I'm Father Kerry Walters, and this has been another Holy Spirit moment. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again soon.